So what we've covered so far is a bit of scene setting in terms of how important modeling is, how and why that is, and what you can do in your own time to try and make you as employable as possible in this reality. But I also wanted to seed into this training or webinar a little bit about my own experience in delivering modeling tests and the classic strengths and weaknesses I've seen in candidates that I hope can help some of you when you next come up to an assessment. I'll quickly summarize some of this now, but I'll be looking out for the Q&A box in case anyone has any individual questions or we can go through at the end. So with that being said, the golden standard for a modeling test is being able to create a discounted cash flow from scratch. Some of you will know what this means, but just in case, when I say from scratch, I mean that the client sends you an Excel model. Typically, the first tab is a num is like an introductory scenario, like we're targeting the acquisition of this BTR asset in Copenhagen. We have this time frame in mind. We are targeting an IRR with a five year time span. Um, tab two is then a tenancy schedule, which as the name implies, goes through the occupancy of the building and the different break clauses involved. You go to tab three and it's a completely blank tab. You have to build the model completely with your own formulas. And sometimes they're in a time limit as early as two hours, but typically more like two and a half hours to three hours, build a discounted cash flow. Um, it can be either in a monthly or quarterly or yearly format. It typically asks for an IRR, which can be either levered or unlevered. The more sophisticated and challenging tests can ask for a sensitivity table or a promote structure. All of these obviously ratchet up the difficulty considerably. I would say starting out, you just need to make sure that you can build a basic DCF model from scratch to reach an unlevered IRR. That, I would say, is the baseline. And from there, you can get better at levered IRR, sensitivity tables, remote structures, okay? But it's really important that you can create a model from scratch. Um, and that's what that phrase, from scratch, means. What do I see often in these situations that candidates fall short on? There are a couple of things. Um, some are really basic, right? You just need to make sure that your home PC and your home setup is as close to identical as possible to your work setup. In other words, if you use a Windows laptop at work, make sure you don't do a modeling test for the first time on an Apple laptop. All of your shortcuts will be significantly different and it can really throw you off. Other things are if you're used to a dual screen setup at work and your single screen at home, that will be a significant issue. You might be surprised at just how much you missed the real estate of two screens. So try and imitate that as well you can. Have your energy drink ready to go. Make sure you have a calculator that's physical rather than the one on your phone. I can't tell the amount of times that people have had a situation where suddenly their phone will do an update mid-modeling test. You want the dependency of a nice separate calculator, um, you should be ready for working to a strict time limit. Please, please, please do not be tempted to hold on to your modeling test an extra 20 minutes to get it perfect. It really doesn't help. Instead, it throws off the client's assessment and it makes your test impossible to judge against your peers because you have the advantage of those extra 20 minutes. However, if you have dyslexia or perhaps another uh, element where the extra time is, is actually really helpful, please feel confident sharing this with your recruiter because I see a lot of willingness with clients to, to match this and allow allocated time when needed, but it's just much better that it's all agreed up front and clear to everyone. Another piece of advice or stress is the importance of formatting. Please don't try to rush a test to get an IRR output. I've actually had many, many candidates pass models where they haven't reached the correct IRR or even got to a rational IRR, but they've actually formatted and approached things really clearly. It's nice and legible. Their tables all make sense. There's nice usage of color coding. I will confess that I don't know how to separate a 10 out of 10 model from an eight out of 10 model. I don't have that literacy myself, but I do know that when I open a model, 
I can even as a layman, I can just I have a visceral reaction to seeing a model that's laid out extremely well. Uh, normally, the candidate will take advantage of a few different tabs at the bottom to split their different uh, metrics. And even as someone like me, you can just immediately tell that someone has really put a lot of energy into it. And that is probably respected just as much, if not more, than getting to the perfect outputs. OK, um, another massive thing I see often in weak modeling tests is candidates rush. They perhaps miss break clauses in the tenancy schedule. It's very common that clients will throw these in to, to basically test the candidate's comprehension of a leasing schedule. Another thing I see often as a, a, a modeling test will ask very explicitly for whether um, they want it monthly, quarterly or yearly. And I've had candidates just launch themselves into a quarterly model when actually monthly is probably the preferred term for most of these funds and PE shops. And even more alarmingly, I've seen candidates do yearly before, but then still times their result by 12, as in they didn't connect the dots and then they've times their output by 12 to make it a monthly model. They just haven't thought straight or they've been trying to cope under the pressure. And it is extreme pressure sometimes of these modeling tests. And it can create... Um, some significant hurdles in in people's approach um i think everything i've mentioned in isolation is a mistake you can make like you can absolutely make mistakes during these tests it's when they all compound together and you're delivering a model late which isn't well formatted which is modeled quarterly rather than a monthly model and you just haven't processed the instructions that it makes the clients really concerned um so those are, I mean, there are probably more if I, you know, if I continue to scrutinize this that I've seen, but those are definitely some of the key strengths and weaknesses I've seen in modeling tests over the years. My mate, to return to my previous point, though, I will reiterate again, please just go for it. Once you're learning the ropes, please try to be fearless in just getting through some of these tests, learning how it works, getting to the point where you're doing shortcuts very quickly with your formulas and you just get used to the process of the modeling test. Because once you join a company, the, the artifice of doing a test in two hours disappears and actually you're, you're, you're building these models for months and you're getting them perfect and you're doing a lot of existing manipulation. It really is a bit of an artificial instruction to build a model, but annoyingly it's part of what you've got to do to get ahead. Um, so I, I also...